left of the box. So with all the cuts going on, all the underfunding to the education, to healthcare, to emergency firefighting, and then we get this. Ontario Premier Doug Ford is facing calls to rein in some spending after the cost of the Premier's office more than doubled in five years. If you look at the Premier's office right now, he's got his own gravy train and he's the engineer, said one MPP. Let's take a peek at this, shall we? It's a central part Ooh, that is of the Doug Ford's brand, finding efficiencies in government and saving taxpayers money. Leaders at every single level of government, they have a duty. They have a duty to do everything we can to keep costs down for the hardworking people of Ontario. But at Queen's Park, the costs at the very top have ballooned since the progressive conservatives entered government. The premier's office under Doug Ford is now the most expensive in Ontario's history. It starts at the top. And if the premier's office is bloated, well, then there's a really good chance that the rest of government's bloated. In 2019, Ford's first full year as premier, there were 20 employees in his office on the sunshine list who were earning six figures or more. In total, they cost $2.9 million. By 2023, the number of six figures salary staff grew to 48, with a total compensation package of $6.9 million, a 136% increase over just five years. Okay. I'll, I'll make this announcement now. I'm quitting my channel to go work in the Doug Ford office. That's where the money is, apparently. All the government spending, all the provincial spending is to work. In, I'm, I'm taking a job in the Doug Ford office. Uh, you would never hire me. And if he did, I would make him regret it. Is the Premier's office two or three times more effective than they were just a few years ago? And I think the answer is no. And I think that uh, we're paying a lot more, but we're not necessarily getting more. And while the progressive conservatives often measure themselves against the record of the former Liberal government, the numbers tell a different story. Ford is running a larger deficit than the Liberals, has recorded a higher provincial debt than the former government as well. Even the Premier's office under Kathleen Wynne was cheaper, costing $2.8 million for 18 employees on the Sunshine List. Now there are calls for change. What really needs to happen right now is a top-to-bottom review of all government spending and leadership from the top. The so leadership from the top means slimming down the size of the Premier's office. Global News sent the Premier's office a list of questions about the spending. They did not respond. So a little bit more on this from Colin DeMello again. Tempers flare at Queen Park today after Doug Ford was pressed on the cost of the Premier's office. Global News revealed the number of the Sunshine List employees. So for those of you who don't know, I have an article on it. I've been meaning to show it. Uh, every year we get what's called the sunshine list and that's government employees that make over a hundred grand a month, a year, not a month, a year. A lot of cops are on that list. Also a lot of people who work in the energy sector are on that list. And so now a lot of people from Doug Ford's office are on that list. So, uh, sunshine list employees in PO has grown from 48 grown 248 from 20 in 2019 now costing nearly 7 million up from 3 million and let's see the tempers flare at a time when ontario families are struggling how does this premier justify Order. increasing the staff in his office from 20 to 48 and more than doubling his budget to 6.9 million dollars Premier, the nerve, the nerve of the member to say about saving taxpayers' money. You're <laughs> the nerve of saving taxpayers' money? What? No, no, no. He He's cutting all the things that, you know, taxpayers need. We don't need him in office. We don't need him and his buddies to be getting paid six figures. Leader Bonnie Crombie 
called the tax break that we gave on gas a gimmick. So we know that she's increasing her gas tax 10.7 cents. That's her plan. Number number one. She called about the stickers on the back of the vehicles, license stickers. She would bring those back too and charge people. The only she'd be against getting rid of the tolls. Yeah, those license plate stickers, which were a pain as somebody who drives. But that brought in so much revenue to the province that it could fund an increase in the amount of emergency firefighters we have. Because, again, mark my words, we're going to lose communities because of this asshole's actions. You say about affordability, but you, sir, vote for a tax increase on every item that we put forward, along with your leader. There's one thing the Liberals and NDP understand in this province. Increase taxes, take money out of people's pockets until Mark. they can't even go buy a burger at the corner store. Ew! Why would you want to buy a burger at the corner store? Ah! What kind of burgers would you get there? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Ew. But so this idea of like, oh no, the NDP, the Liberals would put taxes on stuff and then maybe we would actually get our services, you know. Maybe I wouldn't have to be waiting months to get seen by specialists for certain things. Maybe other people would actually be able to get a family doctor, you know, if our tax money was actually you know, uh, uh, spent appropriately. And the reality is like, sure, some people might be paying less in taxes. Not everyone, because you know, all you conservatives out there, go, go check, go check your taxes and see if they've really been cut back. But then we end up spending more out of pocket to cover the services that are no longer covered by the province. So he's not saving anyone money. And in fact, the cost of living and the crisis and the housing and all of that has gotten exponentially worse under him. I was at Restaurants Canada and all they're saying is we need more relief. Well, if the Liberals and NDP, we saw what happened for 15 years, they increased taxes, drove 300,000 jobs out of the province. Thank you. Thank you. Once again. I remind the members to make their comments through the chair, the supplementary question. The gravy train has pulled in to the Premier's <laughs> office and friends, insiders, fat cats, well they I'm sorry, but this guy going to toot over this, like, does he think that's funny? <laughs> like, okay, it's funny, but not for the reasons he thinks it is. It's always amusing when when very posh and polished politicians try to insult the other side and that's one of the lovely things about question period again i think you yeah, americans you need to get a question period in because you ever see the british go at it with each other it's incredible and we get our moments too here in the uh, canadian uh government where it's just a chance for them to banter back and forth and it is part of the political theater they all get a free ride they all get a free ride, Speaker. I guess it's not Order. a surprise because never has there been a government that has spent so much, borrowed so much, incurred so much debt to do so little. And in the office, Speaker, those 48 staff, all of those 48 staff make more than the median family income in Ontario. Some of them double, some of them triple, some of them quadruple. The median family Order. income, Premier. So is the Premier so out of touch, Speaker? Let's put it this way. <laughs> the people, and not just Doug Ford, but all of the MPPs in Ontario, they get more in a housing allowance than people on disability get to survive on. Never mind the rest of all their benefits and pay. They get 2400 for a housing allowance because, you know, the cost of living in Toronto is so high. So they had to increase that. And meanwhile, people on disability get well, well, they get a thousand dollars less than that. Yeah, it's, uh, huh. And that again, just the housing allowance to say that they're being, 
you know, I'm all for politicians being paid well, well enough that they don't then, you know, wander off into other territories or are bribable and things of that sort. But to get paid that well for not delivering to the people, they're not doing their job. People living with disabilities shouldn't be suffering this much while they get to have $2,400 for a housing allowance. That he thought it was a good idea to raise his office budget by more than $4 million and that each of his 48 staff make more than the median Ontario family. The member for Nepean will come to order. The Premier can reply. Speaker, when they're in office, they increase taxes 45 times. Billions of dollars chase 300,000 jobs out of the office compared to us, Mr. Speaker. We have not. I'm not going to answer anything that you just said. I'm not going. To, I'm just going to point and say taxes increased, but I'm not going to acknowledge or address anything you said about how much money we're making here because we're making so much money. We're making like lots and lots of money. I'm just I'm doling out the money to the people working in my office. So uh, yeah, I don't want to address that. revenues, Mr. Speaker, by $64 billion, never increase the tax. We decrease taxes. We put money back into people's pockets until they'll be able to maybe go out. Put it back in our pockets until we go to the grocery store and have to pay outrageous prices or until our rent gets increased because there's no rent control anymore. Buy <laughs> a hamburger or go to the local store or go to the local restaurant. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? Premier will take a seat for a moment. Member for Ottawa South must come to order. The Premier has a few more seconds to reply. One thing Bonnie Crombie understands is increase the carbon tax, increase gas taxes, increase everything to do with buying food. Again, he's he's all about Bonnie Crombie for some reason. That's the leader of the Liberal Party, not the official opposition. Merritt Stiles is. And this might shock a lot of people. But uh, back a couple elections ago, when it was between the Liberals and, and uh, Doug Ford, you know, back when we still had Kathleen Wynne around, the Liberals knew they were about to lose. Lose big time. They told people to vote Conservative. They actually pushed people towards Doug Ford because... They were worried about what the NDP would do if they got into power. They were just shy of winning that first time around. Like, it's just the the way that the the conservatives and liberals work in this province is ridiculous. How much they work together and how much they both hate the NDP. Because, you know, should the NDP get into power and actually do what they say they would, there would never be a conservative or liberal government again in this province. But... Like, just to be picking on the Liberals so much for Doug Ford when they helped to get him in power in the first place? Uh, kind of... Kind of ironic. That's all they understand is tax, tax, tax. You know, Mr. Speaker, we're going to reduce taxes. Order! Order! The Premier will come to order. The member for Nepean will come to order. Come to order. Order burgers. Come to order hamburgers. <laughs> 